Hey, it's Brent from the White Lab Workshop. Today, I'm gonna to show you how I made this simple wine bottle gift box with spline miters out of materials I picked up from my local home center. Let's get to it. I started with half inch oak and quarter inch poplar from the home center, both about five and a half inches wide. I knew that the average wine bottle is around three inches wide and 12 inches tall, so I sized the box to leave some wiggle room for different sized bottles, just in case. I used the cross cut sled on my table saw to cut the four sides to length. My plan was to cut a rabbit along the bottom edge of all the sides for the poplar to fit into for the box bottom. So I swapped my combination blade for a dado stack. I've messed up enough on these kinds of cuts that I knew I wanted to cut the rabbit before I ripped down the sides to their final width. I mean height. Whatever. This gave me some ability to botch a couple of rabbit cuts, cut them off, start over, and still end up with the dimensions I needed. I also added a sacrificial fence to my rip fence because the rip fence on this thing is awesome and I don't want to mess it up if I can help it. Once I was satisfied I didn't actually screw up the rabbit cuts, I put my combination blade back in the saw and ripped the sides down to their final size. This box was going to utilize spline miters, which means I need to cut 45 degree miters on the ends of each box side. I tipped the blade to 45 degrees, then set the rip fence into position hoping to cut the miter without shortening the sides. My eyeballing got me close, but I did end up shortening the sides a tiny bit after all. As long as each opposing side had a matching length, I was happy. Next, I brought my crosscut sled back out to cut the poplar bottom to length. I had waited to do this until I had the size of the box worked out with the miters. I wanted something to support the wine bottle as it sat in the box, so I came up with the idea to cut some oak at roughly 45 degree angles to act as a guide of sorts. I'd have a neck support and a body support. I'd glue them in place in the box, and they would give the bottle something to sit on to keep it from rolling around. That will hopefully make more sense in a few minutes. I used my crosscut sled to cut the pieces to what I was hoping was a good size. The support for the neck was going to be the full width of the box with a V cut into the middle of it for the neck to rest in. The support for the body was going to be little 45 degree wedges, or isosceles right triangles for you math nerds, that would get glued into the bottom corners. I attempted a dry fit to see how well I sized the neck support. It was a little too wide, so I trimmed it up. Another dry fit showed that I had trimmed a little too much. I also realized there was a certain amount of margin of error inherent in getting the mitered corners to fit nicely together, which affected the size that this piece would need to be. Rather than try to find that perfect width for the neck support, I decided I would cut dados into the sides for the neck support to slide into. This would allow a little fudge factor to work with, but it also meant that I had to cut a new, wider neck support.
With that figured out, I went over to my router station and routed a dado for the next support with a half inch straight bit. Then I squared off the dado with chisels for a nice fit. Before we go any further, I'm really excited to share my No Fence Miter Station design with you. I've been working really hard on this design and I hope you too can appreciate its simplicity. And hey, if you're new here and like what you see, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and ring the bell so you don't miss any more opportunities to drool over my sweet setup. For the body supports, I needed to cut little triangles to glue in the bottom corners of the box. I used scrap wood to help me hold the piece in place for the cuts. For the next support, I marked 45 degrees from roughly where the support would connect with the dado. That should leave enough meat underneath to raise the neck of the wine bottle up a little bit and support it. Cutting that view is kind of interesting though. A bandsaw would have been perfect, but mine was still sitting at the store that one day I hope to buy it from. My scroll saw would have worked well too, but I've broken a bunch of blades lately and need to buy some new ones. The piece was too small to get any decent clamping worked out for a handheld jigsaw, and looking back, I probably would have had the best results with my table saw, but I decided to get creative with my miter saw. I tipped the saw over to 45 degrees and held the piece in place with some scrap. I stopped my cut short of the line with the intention of using my new Japanese pull saw to finish the cut. Unfortunately, the saw bucked a bit when I let go of the trigger, and I ended up cutting past my line instead of short of it. So I had to adjust my other cut accordingly, and made sure to lift up the saw before letting go of that trigger. I brought the piece over to my bench vise and used my Japanese pull saw to finish the cut and remove the waste material. After finishing up at the miter station, I went over to the assembly table and laid the box pieces out for sanding. Then I sanded everything to 220 grit. While sanding, I noticed the poplar bottom had some cupping to it. So I brought it over to the jointer to flatten out the side that would face in the box. My jointer is kinda lazy, so I ended up having to go with a good enough approach. With everything sanded up, I went back to the assembly table to prep for glue up. I opted for the painter's tape clamping method, so I got all the corners aligned and taped up. Then I started gluing it all together, including the neck support and the bottom. While the glue dried, I put my dado stack on the table saw and tested out different blade configurations to find just the right width for the poplar I intended to use for the splines. Mm -hmm. 
See this? Complete lies. I'll show you why in a bit. Back at the assembly table, I took the clamps off and admired my work so far. Next, it was time to cut the splines to support the miters. I set up my spline jig to cut a spline about an inch from the top and an inch from the bottom of each corner. It was after taking this picture that I noticed the spline slots I had cut were quite a bit smaller than they needed to be to fit the quarter inch poplar. I tried sanding the spline pieces down, but that took forever, and I ended up with an inconsistent thickness anyway. So I pulled the spline jig out again and put just one of the outer dado stack blades on to try to sneak up on that correct thickness. Against all odds, I finally got there, so I glued the splines in and left it overnight. I also took the opportunity to glue in the body supports. A couple of days later I tested out my new Japanese pull saw to flush cut the extra material of the splines. I also learned not to try to cut completely flush because I slightly marred the surrounding box. Not to worry though, the splines looked great after some sanding. Now it was time to focus on the top. The top would be pretty simple, just cut with a slight overhang and rabbited to give it a way to settle into the box a little bit. I used the box itself to help position the stop blocks for sizing. Time to head over to the router table for some rabbits. I set up the router table to cut rabbits such that the top set into the box slightly with just a little bit of play. Then I headed over to the sanding station and sanded the top to 220 grit. Someone must have left that shop door open because the mosquitoes that night were ferocious. After donating a significant amount of blood to the local mosquito population, the wine box was all ready for finish. I made my way over to the finishing station to get ready for staining. My wife has a great eye for color and chose this really dark ebony stain. In fact, she has her own channel where a couple of her topics are DIY craft ideas and home decor. It's called White Lab House. Go ahead and check her channel out if you're into that kind of stuff.
After letting the stain dry, I tried out a spray satin polyurethane for the first time. The end results were pretty good. Now, you may have noticed that the workshop here at the White Lab Workshop is really more of a state of mind than an actual workshop. I work in my garage and in the driveway. Seeing some of the bigger channels with huge and impressive shops can make it seem unattainable for hobbyists like us to ever have any success in woodworking. I hope this channel will help you realize that couldn't be farther from the truth. If you like this video, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button and consider subscribing to the channel and ringing the bell. We've got a lot more woodworking projects queued up and we'd love to share them with you. Thanks for stopping by and we'll see you next time.